Om Maha Ganapataye Namaha. How to enhance your intuition and your ability to manifest thoughts. In this video, I'm going to explain the science of how this happens and also going to share two techniques that can be used individually or together to help facilitate this process. First, let's look at intuition and understand what is intuition versus knowledge. Intuition is something that happens beyond knowledge. Knowledge is memory. Memory is the accumulated information that you are using to base all of your decisions and intelligence off of. It is limited because it is a limited amount of information. Intuition is something else that comes beyond and pierces through into your conscious mind beyond your memory. Albert Einstein would call it as the intuitive mind, where he says the intuitive mind is the sacred gift, but we have given more prominence to the rational mind. He attributes all of his uh, genius, what we consider as Albert Einstein as a genius, he says it's because everything he has discovered came upon him. It came through his intuition. Nikola Tesla also talks somewhere about this, where if you look at Nikola Tesla, all of his genius came from intuition as well. The great uh, Indian scientist, I can't remember his name, it's Ramanujan, the man who wrote a movie about um, the man who discovered infinity or something like that. You can go and Google it. Uh, he, when he was at, I think, Oxford or Stanford, some really high, highbrow school, and they were trying to figure out, how did you come up with these equations? What were the steps? And he couldn't tell them because he didn't know the steps. The, the equations came upon him through his intuition. So intuition is a superior form of intelligence that is, in one word, unlimited versus knowledge or the rational mind which is in one word limited now thought manifestation if you don't know about thought manifestation or this science I encourage you to go for an in-depth deep dive into the science behind this check out my video a recent video called the science of instantaneous manifestation in short we have quantum physics or particle physics telling us that particles are being collapsed into matter from forms of waves or waves of potential, non-local waves of potential. Our mind, or our, we are observing these, this potential into particles, which then create the molecules and all the matter or the reality that we consider as reality that we can perceive through our five senses. So, thought manifestation is actually a mind, a mind over matter or mind becoming matter. Now, more precisely, it is the subconscious and unconscious mind that is creating, as opposed to your conscious mind. For example, if you say, I have a Rolls Royce in the driveway, or um, I have a thousand dollars sitting in front of me, because you're thinking that thought from your conscious mind it doesn't manifest. And similarly, although you may want to be rich, you may want to be um, in a relationship. You may want to be um, spiritually enlightened or whatever that is. Although you may think that consciously, subconsciously, the reason it's not manifesting is because there are beliefs or thoughts or an information you're storing in your subconscious, which is creating a cognitive dissonance, meaning there is a contradiction happening and therefore it's washed out, meaning also the subconscious and unconscious are more powerful as far as their influence over your life. So, how to enhance your intuition and how to enhance your ability to manifest thoughts? By activating the part of your brain known as the midbrain, also known as the first brain, the primitive brain, brain the reptilian brain, as opposed to what Einstein would call as the rational mind, neurologically speaking, is the neocortex, which is the mushroom part of the brain, which grew at a later time. It started off with the primitive brain, which is the intuitive brain. It is the seat of intuition. It is also the seat of the subconscious. So in the yogic tradition, they also say it is the seat of the third eye, and that any thought that goes into your third eye will manifest. It f turns out that the pineal gland, which is in the midbrain, at the very center is an actual eye. It has rods, it has cones, and it has a retina. So 
Is it a coincidence that yogis without surgery, without dissection, came across, draw the conclusion that it was called as a third eye and used that word? And that we're also now finding out that it is, in fact, very similar to an eye? It's very interesting. In general, if you put a thought in this part of your brain, particularly the pineal gland, that is, is the place where you could access your subconscious and unconscious directly, and therefore implant that thought directly into the place from which it sprouts and manifests, as opposed to thinking that thought through your neocortex, or particularly your frontal lobe area, which is where most of our energy is resting. If you, if you put your attention on your head, you're going to feel that most of your energy is resting in your the eye area and the frontal lobe area. This is where it's easiest to feel, because this is where we have given prominence, as Albert Einstein says. I don't know the exact quote, but he it's basically we're giving prominence to the rational mind, which is this mind here. So we have to shift into the midbrain. Now, how to do that? Well, there are two techniques I'm going to share with you right now. Both of them come from Dr. Ply. Both of them are based on scientific research. And you can use them individually, as I said, or use them together. I will teach you how to use them both together as well in this video, which I'm going to give it to you now. And also, as a reference, after you watch this video, look at the description and the links, and I'll post where you can get these initiations from Dr. Ply on YouTube. So, technique number one is called as midbrain tapping. Midbrain tapping is a, is a phrase coined by Dr. Ply, which is a technique where you tap on reflexology points or subtle nervous centers in your forehead that correspond to your midbrain. Reflexology is an idea or concept that has been used for hundreds of thousands, if not thousands of years, which is essentially a science of stimulating an area on one part of your body to stimulate an area that's seemingly disconnected in another part of your body. Japanese researchers used functional magnetic resonance imaging technology, also known as fMRI, which is a way to measure the brain. And their study was using reflexology points in the foot. And they find found out by pushing certain areas in your foot, as reflexology documented, that it in fact does stimulate areas of the brain, which they were able to measure with the fMRI. Similarly, there's a point here called the yin tang in between your two eyebrows. And other points that have different names in Sanskrit that go up in this area here. So the technique is you first close your eyes, or you can do this with your eyes open, but I recommend doing it with your eyes closed first because it'll help you um, increase your attention and focus. So first you close your eyes, you pull all of your attentional energy into the space in between your two eyebrows. All of your attentional energy you pull into the space in between your two eyebrows. Once you're able to bring all of the attentional energy into the space between your two eyebrows, you then visualize a line that goes from that spot, starting there, all the way along your forehead, up into the center top of your head. Hold on to that line, bring your attentional energy onto that line, and then begin tapping from the beginning point in between your two eyebrows and trace that line using your right ring finger or right pinky finger and end up at the top of the brain. Once you reach the top of the brain, bring your hand back down to your lap and simply feel that line and feel any sensations in the midbrain. You want to feel your midbrain opening up. You can either hold on to that line you can feel the midbrain center area of your brain, starting at your brain stem, going to the top center of your brain, in the middle of your brain as a pillar of light, opening up, or just simply hold on to that line you just traced out. Now, some of you may experience some profound effects right away. Some of you may not. It's a uh, varies depending on where you're at. If you don't feel anything right away, you will eventually if you just keep doing it. The more you tune your body, the more you'll be able to feel these sort of things. What I notice right away, within seconds, is the mind becomes naturally more quiet, naturally more calm. And if you understand particle physics and also yogic sciences, the greater your natural silence, the greater your intelligence expands. The more clear and focused you are, the greater your creativity is, and so on and so forth.
what happens is, in, in that context of this video, is the greater your intuition will be able to be. The more white noise you have in your mind, the more difficult it is for your intuition to penetrate. The quieter, naturally quieter your mind is, the more easily your intuition will be able to penetrate into your mind. And now the second technique is using sound, a phoneme, particularly a phoneme, which is a syllable. Now the science of phonemes or phonemic intelligence, which is Dr. Ply's technology, which he has researched with Harvard Medical School using fMRI, also with Brain Science International, with one of the foremost, if not the foremost, QEEG expert in the entire world, Jay Gunkelman out of San Francisco, where they were finding that these phonemes, to their surprise, were not stopping in the auditory cortex, which is a part of the brain associated with hearing. That these sounds were able to penetrate into specific areas of the brain, or in some cases, the entire brain, and activate it. And by activate, what they call is a global activation or activation means increased blood flow and also increasing of the neuronal firing in that area of the brain. So the more that the area of the brain is stimulated, or a certain area of the brain is stimulated, the more active or activated it becomes. Now, the sound for the midbrain is this, or the phoneme for the midbrain is the sound hmm. So the technique which you can go get from Dr. Ply in the link, I'll walk through really quickly and also how you can pair both of these together. This technique on a standalone all you do, you can do this in one of two ways. Pull your attention again, close your eyes, and pull your attention in between your two eyebrows. Focus all of your attention in between your two eyebrows, and then simply say the sound, hmm, like this. Hmm. Feel. Hmm. Continue to associate the sound with the area in between your two eyebrows. Mm. So what you're doing is you are merging your attentional energy, which is simply you feeling the space between your two eyebrows, and you are associating that sound with the two eyebrows, within that space in between the two eyebrows. You can also go directly into the midbrain by visualizing a pillar of light starting at your brainstem, in the center of your brain, going all the way to the top center of your brain. And repeat the process of chanting. Mm. After some time, once you're comfortable and if it feels right, you can take this internally so you're not vocalizing the sound and simply focus on it mentally. Both of them are good and both of them are great. And uh, although mentally can be more powerful, Vocalizing is also very, very powerful and also will activate your brain in a very powerful way as well. So, to combine both of these together, again, keep your eyes closed, pull your attentional energy into between the two eyebrows, visualize the line beginning at between your two eyebrows, a thin line starting there and going and ending at the top of your brain in the center. And then we're going to trace that line out with our right ring or pinky finger Gently tapping, allow your hand to fall back into your lap, feel the line you've just traced out, and now associate that line in attentional energy with the sound. Mm. Mm. And that's it. Now, what you can do is do this for five minutes, at least five minutes per day. Do both of them together, five minutes per day. If you can do it five minutes in the morning after waking up and five minutes going before, before you go to bed, that would be great. You can also do it in seconds, within 30 seconds or less, all throughout the day. Whenever you feel discombobulated, whenever you feel out of whack or you need to recenter yourself, or get clear, get some focus, maybe you wanna work on something, get creative. Do this technique, you can do it in seconds. You can do either one of them by themselves or combine them both together. I highly recommend it. I can immediately feel myself dipping into a very silent, very calm, very relaxed state within seconds of doing this. It is it's like shifting out of the beta state of brain into the alpha state or theta state within seconds. 
Now, again, the more that you tune your body, the more that you will be able to feel these sensations in a more profound way. And by continuing to practice this technique, you will be able to tune your body in a better way. And the more that part of the brain becomes active, the more you continue to reinforce that part of the brain by continuing to focus on it all throughout the day, the easier it will be to uh, feel the midbrain and therefore reap the rewards of that part of the brain being the most predominant part of the brain that you are functioning out of. I hope this video helps. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them underneath this video below. And as always, if you'd like to be notified for future videos, click subscribe and the bell notification button. God bless.